We're starting the Gemara today on Daf Mem Dalet, Amud Aleph, about 10, 15 lines into the Amud, where it says, Misha Hoya Nasi V'chulo. This goes back on what it said in the Mishnah, that if a person is married to two wives and he passes away, so then the halacha is, you only do yibum for one of them, and that pat is the other wife, or chalitza for one of them, and it pat is the other wife. So the Gemara here is going to bring the source for this halacha. Why do we not do yibum for both of them? Why, how, how could the yibum of one pat to the other one? And originally, they both fall for yibum, and you could do yibum for one or the other, so maybe you should have to do yibum for both of them. The Pasik says, we had this before in the Gemara a few times. So what do we learn from this? Bayis echad u bainet says beis achiv one house so bayis echad only one wife who baina he builds he, he does the mitzvah of yibum veim baina shnei batim there's no mitzvah of yibum for two of the wives of his brother so we know that there's no yibum for both of the wives but the gemara still asks but maybe venachlitz the tarvayu maybe in such a case you should have to give chalitza for both of them you see that not yibum for two but maybe when there's two wives you have to give chalitza for both. The Pesach says, Beis Chalutz Hanal. So here also it says, Elosh Yochid Beis Chalutz Hanal. So we learn, Beis Echad U Chalitz. You do Chalitza for one wife, and Chalitz Shnei Batim. And you don't do Chalitza for both wives. But the Gemara still asks, so we know that you can't do Yibum for both, and you don't do Chalitza for both. But still the Shaila is, V'niyabim L'chode, V'nachlitz L'chode. Maybe you should do Yibum for one, and the chalitza for another. So you're not doing yibum for both or chalitza for both. Yibum for one, chalitza for the other, maybe that you should be obligated. So still the question is, how do you know that the yibum or the chalitza from one part is the other one? So the Gemara answers, Amakra, because the Pasik says, Im lo If a person doesn't want to do yibum, so instead of yibum, you do chalitza. So what do we learn from this? This is also a drasha we had a few times before. Ha chafeitz yibum. So when you do chalitza, when, is, when do, you, do you do chalitza in a case where if you wanted, you could have done yibum. So that from there we, here we learn, that in a case where this woman could go for, for yibum, then she comes and could, could go, there's an option for chalitza as well. But if, if she doesn't go for Yibum, like we said before, because you can't have both of them that you do Yibum for them, so therefore she doesn't have to do Chalitza either. So Bekitza, therefore we see that the Yibum of one will patter the other, and the other one does not have to do Chalitza. Now the Oi, the Gemara says now another point, that people shouldn't come and say, that when you have two wives of one brother, so people shouldn't say that, that when you, uh, the one bias, so you have to do Yibum for one of them, and for the other bias you have to do Chalitza. So people shouldn't say that you have an obligation to do Yibum and, uh, for one and Chalitza for the other. So not only is it, is it something that uh, it's not a chiyuv, not only is it not a chiyuv to do yibum for one and chalitza for the other, but it's actually also going to be usr, the Gemara is saying now. We don't want you to come and say that you do yibum for one and chalitza for the other, because it's usr to do yibum for one and chalitza for the other. So on this second point here, that it's usr, the Gemara asks, why is it usr? V'yoymru. What's going to happen if people are going to say such a thing? What's so wrong if you do yibum for one wife, and then afterwards you do chalitza for the second. When you do chalitza for the second, if the chalitza does not take effect, so it's done nothing. You didn't do anything that's a iser. Why would this be a iser? So the Gemara says, depends on the order. If first a person does yibum for one wife, and then he does chalitza for the second wife, so you're right. So it's not a problem if people say that you're obligated to do yibum for one and chalitza for the other. There's nothing wrong if you do chalitza when you don't have to. Ella, but the problem is But if he does chalitza for one wife first and after he does chalitza for one wife then for the second wife he does yibum that's a iser. There's a law for this because there's a law of lo yibone. once you do chalitza for one wife now for the other wife there's a iser law to do yibum. The Gemara, but now the Gemara goes back again to the whole thing that we said over here. That when there's two wives, so you only do Yibum for one and you don't have to do for the other. But maybe we should darshan from that Pasik that we brought before, that it's talking about one wife, maybe we should say as follows. 
So the Shara maybe I'll say, Ki ikha chode, when there's only one wife, to sky in mitzvah yibum. That's when you have the mitzvah of yibum. Ki ikha tarti, when there are two wives, loy to sky in mitzvah yibum. Maybe in such a case, there's bachlal on mitzvah of yibum. Because it says in the Torah, Loshin Yochid, bias, one, one wife, maybe the whole mitzvah of yibum is taka only when there is one wife. Says the Gemara, that you can't say, because in Cain, if you're going to say that the mitzvah of yibum is only when there's one wife, Tzoras erve the osar achmone lomeli. So this halacha that we learned in the beginning of the Masechta, the first mission of the Masechta, that when there's an erve, there's no mitzvah of yibum. And then we learned from the Pasuk Litzray, that also the tzara of the erve, there's no yibum either. So why do I need a Pasuk to teach me that there's no yibum for the tzara of the erve? Hashte, now you're telling me over here that you would learn out from this Pasuk. That Beis Ba'alma, any time you have two wives, even if none of them are an Erve, Omret, Lav Bnei Chalitze, V'yivim Nino. So because there are two wives, there's no Mitzvah of Chalitze or Yivim at all. Tzadas Erve Mi Boye. So do I need a special Pasuk to teach me regarding a Tzadas Erve that there's no Mitzvah of Yivim for the Tzad of the Erve? There's two wives? Any time there's two wives, you're, you're trying to say that there's no Mitzvah of Yivim at all? But the Gemara doesn't accept this answer. The Gemara says, No, why wouldn't I say that I need a special Pasuk for Tzara Serve? It's Tzarech. Maybe you do need a special Pasuk to say that by Tzara Serve, that Tzara doesn't need the Mitzvah of Yibum. Why? Because maybe I would say the following Svara. Erve Abroi Kaime. One wife, which is a Erve, is a Erve, she's on the outside. She's not part of this whole Mitzvah of Yibum at all. And therefore, it's as if there's only one wife over here for the mitzvah of Yibam. So, Yabim Sarasa. So, in such a case, I would think that the one wife which is fit for the mitzvah of Yibam, you should do the Yibam for that one wife. Kamash Malan Dasira. So, therefore, maybe I would need a special Pasuk over here just for, for there by the Tzadah's Erva. I need a Pasuk of Litzra to say that for the Tzadah of the Erva, there's no mitzvah of Yibam. So Bekitzer, the question still remains, maybe we could say that over here the Pasuk is teaching me that whenever there are two wives, there's no mitzvah of Yibum. Yibum is only when there's one wife. So on that the Gemara answers, Elo Yivimtoi Yivimtoi Riba. Because it says in the Pasuk twice, then it says again, also Yivimtoi Yashara. So the extra time Yivimtoi comes to add, to tell me that even when a person has two wives, there's also a mitzvah of Yibum. Okay, the next thing it said in the Mishnah was that if a person has two wives and one of his wives, Haisa Achas Kshayda, one of them is kosher for Kohone and the other one is Psula Le Kohone, so then what's the Allah? So if you're doing y- Yibum, so the Mishnah said you do Yibum for the Kshayda. If you're doing Chalitze, you do Chalitze <coughs> for the Psula. Why? Because if you're going to do Chalitza for the Kshayda, you're going to end up passing a woman that was kosher for a Kayan and now through the Chalitza she becomes possible. Amr Rav Yosef, we had this also in the Gemara before, so Rav Yosef said, Kan Shana Rebbe, here Rebbe is teaching us the following thing, a person should not pour out water that he has in his pit, and others need it, even if he does not need it, for him it doesn't matter, but if it's going to ruin it for others, you shouldn't do this. So even if you could say, for me, it doesn't matter if I do the Chalitza for the Kshayra or for the Psula, but for a Kayin it could matter. A Kayin had an option to marry her, now you did a, a Chalitza for the Kshayra, now the Kayin can't marry her. So if you could, do the Chalitza for the Psula, and don't passel the one that's kosher for the Kayin. Okay, now the next Mishnah starts a new Indian that uh, we'll discuss Bechlal, the, the concept of a Mamzer, what kind of a relation that gives birth to a child, the child that's born will be a mamzer. So this is a new subject, not specifically related to a yavam and yavama, but bechlal, the whole halacha, we had it before a few times, there's a famous machlekes between Rabbi Kiva and other tanoim, what exactly makes a child a mamzer. A person that returns a grusha, that he divorced, and this is in a case where after she got divorced, she married someone else, and afterwards he's getting married to her. So there's a love in such a case not to get married to your grusha. A person that marries a chalutza. So Hanaisa Chalutzasa is also, also a love. There's a love of Loi Yibana, that you're not allowed to marry her. And Hanaisa Kreves Chalutzasa, a person that marries a relative of a Chalutza. So this is something that the Gemara is going to discuss, because before in the Gemara, we learned that Kreves Chalutzasa is only a Gzeire Med Rabbana, not Menateire. So Rabbi Kiva says, Yaitzi Vavlad Mamze. In all these cases, the child, that, so first he has to be Maitzi, his wife. It's not married, the marriage doesn't take effect, Bechlal. And Vavlad Mamze, 
A child born from this is a mamza. Divrei Rabbi Kiva. This is Rabbi Kiva's opinion. So the point of Rabbi Kiva's shita is that any time there's a relation, there's a marriage, it's a isalav. So first of all, the kedushin doesn't take effect at all, and second of all, the child that's born is a mamza. No, the child in such a case, which is only Yisalav, the child is not a Mamzer. The Kiddushan takes effect also, and the child is not a Mamzer. But Chachamu will agree that if a person marries a relative of, his, of a wife that he divorced, Shavlad Mamzer, then in such a case, the child will be a Mamzer. Because the halacha by a wife that you divorce is that even after you divorce her, she still all the arayas that apply to you to, to the kreivim of your wife when you were married to her also apply even after you divorce her. So therefore, a sister or a mother, these are all still chayve krisis. So therefore, the child that will be born will be a mamzer. So the Gemara here will focus on that one case that I mentioned, kreivas chalutzasai, a relative of a chalutza. Does Rabbi Kiva hold that if a person marries a relative of a chalutza, the child will be a mamzer? But for Homer, Ishlokish, Ishlokish said, we learned this before, Kan Shona Rebbe, there's a mission before where Rebbe teaches us, Achoyiz Gerusha Midivre Teire, a sister of a Gerusha, that's a la, that's a Issa, that's a Issa Kodis Mina Teire, and Achoyiz Chalutza Midivre Seifrim. But a sister or any relative of a chalutza is only exerim with the So you shouldn't come to confuse a grusha with a chalutza. So it's only exerim with the So how could it say here that according to Rabbi Kiva, that a child born for such a marriage, which is only a ism with the rabbanon, that the child would be a mamzer? So the Gemara answer is, so tni, you have to change the girs in the Mishnah, you have to learn kreivaz girushasai. Rabbi Kiva was saying a relative of a wife that you divorced, that's going to be a uh, mamzer. It's logical to say that this is how you read the Mishnah. The Ketani Seife, because in the Seife, in the Chacham's opinion, it says, Umaydim, that the Chachamim agree, kreivas gerushosai, if you marry the relative of a Grusha, Shavlad Mamzer, that the child is a Mamzer. So now, when he was saying Umayde, he's Maide regarding this. So now, if you're going to say that in the Reisha, Rabbi Kive, Chachamim are arguing on Rabbi Kive. <coughs> Sorry, and Rabbi Kive, Spoke about this. He mentioned this case of Kreivas Gerusha. So, So that's why it says that even though Chachamim argue on all the other cases of Rabbi Kiva, because it's only a lav, but they're agreeing when they get to this case of Kreivas Gerusha, because that's a Issachoris. But Eli, Amrit Loyariba, if Rabbi Kiva never mentioned this case of Kreivas Gerusha, so what does it mean that he agrees to something that Rabbi Kiva said? Rabbi Kiva didn't speak about this at all. Frak the Gemara. No, this is not a raya, because I can still say, Vidilme, maybe, when it says that Chachamim agree by Kreivas Grusha, even though Rabbi Kiva didn't mention it, but maybe, Hokam Ashmolon. This is what the Chachamim are coming to say. Yesh Mamze, Mechai Vekrisis. That there still is a Mamze from Chai Vekrisis. You may think when the Chachamim come and say that Enavlad Mamze, maybe they mean from any Erev there's no, chai vik, uh, there's no uh, Mamze. So for that, the Chachamim are coming to say, even though I argue with Rabbi Kiva Minigayat Chai Vekrisis, but I will agree by a Kreivas Guru Shasai, which is a Chai Vekrisis, that for this there is a Mamze. So even if Rabbi Kiva didn't mention it, the Lashon of Maidim still fits in. So the Gemara says, but no, but that's not necessary to say in this Mishnah. For that, there's a clear Mishnah that later says this. Mishnah says, mamzer, Which child is a Mamzer? Anytime you have a relative, that is a love of Lo Yovoy, Divri Rabbi Kiva. A child that's born from a love is a Mamzer. Shemina Temani, or Shemina Temani, Yoimer, Shemina Temani says, Kol Shechayovan of Kodes B'Deshemayim. The, only cha, the, the child will only be a mamzer if the relation was a chi of kodes. So that's a clear Mishnah later. And v'halacha kedvarov. And we pass in like Shimon HaTimani. So why does the Mishnah over here have to say chachamim amayde if this halacha that a child born from a kodes is a mamzer says clearly later. But the Gemara says that no, but maybe there is a reason why the Tan is saying it here. V'dilme kasasim lan tane kishimina timani. Maybe the Tana here wants to tell you a Stam Mishnah, like Shimon Atimani, to know that the Halacha is like the Stam Mishnah. So maybe that's why it says, Kreivaz Gerushasai, to say that we be passing like this Stam Mishnah. So the point is, there's still no Raya that in the Reisha you should be Geiris, Kreivaz Gerushasai. Maybe over there you should be Geiris, Kreivaz Chalutzasai. But the Gemara asks, if that's the point, 
that the Tane here is coming to tell me that for every Chai Vekrisis, the child will be a Mamzer, in Cain, list Nishar Chai Vekrisis. So then if it's coming to say the Chachamim Amaide for a case of a Chai Vekrisis, why doesn't it say any other Chai Vekrisis? Kreivas Gerushasai Lomali. Why is it saying specifically this example of Chai Vekrisis, which is Kreivas Gerushasai? So again, the Gemara wants to prove, Mistamid, because Rabbi Kiva mentioned Kreves Gerushasai. And therefore, the Chachamim are also saying Kreves Gerushasai. El Shmami no Ayri Ba. We have to be guided in the Lashon of Rabbi Kiva. He was speaking about Kreves Gerushasai. And therefore, the Chachamim also are saying Kreves Gerushasai. But the Gemara doesn't accept this. And the Gemara says, Vidilme, but maybe I can tell you, Loi Lom, Loi Ayri Ba. Rabbi Kiva never spoke about Kreves Gerushasai. He only spoke about Kreves Chalutzasai. But the Aidi, the Tone, Machze Grushasai, the Noisa Chalutzasai, the Kravis Chalutzasai, Rabbi Kiva spoke about these cases of a person returning a Grusha, marrying a Chalutza, marrying a relative to a Chalutza. So Tone Nami, Kravas Grushasai. So the Chachamim are saying a case that's similar to those cases. It's not the same case Rabbi Kiva spoke about, but it's similar to those cases, and it's saying that Chachamim Amoide regarding Kravas Grushasai, because this is a Chayve Krisis, and therefore the child will be a Mamzer. So Bekitzer, we have no raya from the Seifa of the Mishnah when the Chachamim say you maidim regarding Kreves Gerushasai that you have to be guided in the Reisha as well, Kreves Gerushasai. So the Gemara goes back to the Girsa that we had in our Mishnah that it says that Rabbi Kiva is saying that Kreves Chalutzasai, a child that's born, is a Mamzer. So the question is, Elo, Kreves Chalutzasai, let Rabbi Kiva have a Mamzer. It comes out that Rabbi Kiva was saying that Kreves Chalutzasai, the child is a Mamzer. So why is this? Why is the child a mamzer if we learned until here that that's only ism de Rabbana? So here the Gemara says, Rabbi Kiva disagrees. The reason for Rabbi Kiva why the child is a mamzer, Rabbi Kiva holds that there is a love. The Pasuk says, Beis chalutz hanal. Hakosov koire beisai. The Pasuk is referring to a woman that he did chalitza for her to be beisai, like she was his wife. And therefore, the lav of lo yibane applies over here as well. And, and, and therefore, this is a lav. So Rabbi Kiva disagrees with what we learned before, that it's only a uh, only exedim that are There is a lav, and therefore the child that's born will be a mamzer. Amar Av Yisuf, Amar Av Shimon, Barabi, Hakoyal Maidim, everybody agrees. The machze grushosai, when a person returns his wife, that he divorced her after she married someone else. So he's being over a lav by doing this. Shavlad Pogum, that the child will be blemished. What does it mean, Pogum? Le Kohone, to be blemished, cannot marry, the child is, is possible to a Kayin. The child has a din of a Chalala, right? So this is a girl that's born, so this girl is a Chalala, she can't marry a Kayin. Sakti Gemare, Mana Kayin Who was Rav Yosef saying is being made to this? So the Gemara's answer is Shimon Atimani. It's Shimon Atimani that's agreeing that the child will be a Chalala. What's the Chiddush here? Even though Shimon HaTimani said that a child born from a Chi of Lav is not going to be a Mamzer, so the child won't be a Mamzer. But the child will be blemished, that he, the child, the, 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 this girl, cannot marry a Kayin. What's, what's the reason for this? So the Gemara says, Because we have a Kav from a case of an almana that married a Kohen Gadol. Uma almana le Kohen Gadol, if an almana marries a Kohen Gadol, so this is a Isalav, a Kohen is not let him, a Kohen Gadol that is, is not let him marry an almana. She'en Yisura Shava Bakoil. This is an Isra that doesn't apply equally to everybody. It's only to a Kohen Gadol. But nevertheless, what's the Allah? But not Pogum. A child that's born from this marriage will be Pogum, will be possible to, to, to get married to a Kohen. <laughs> so Zu she Yisuri Shava Bakoil over here you're talking about a lav of Machze Gerushasai, which is a lav that's equal for every yid. Ain't a din she be pogum. So it's a stronger lav. So definitely the child born from this is a lav will be possible to marry Kayanim. That's the Kavachaimer. So the Gemara is going to ask a few questions on this chiddush here that Rav Yosef said that this child will be will be possible to Kayanim. So first of all, the Gemara says the Kavachaymer is not a good Kavachaymer. Ikele Mifrach, I could refute this Kavachaymer. Malal Mane, by the case of Almana. You know why the child becomes possible to Kayanim? She can he yet mischaleles. This Almana herself that married the Kayan Gadol, she herself becomes possible to marry any Kayan afterwards. So because I see the mother becomes a Chalala, that's why the child becomes a Chalala. 
But over here, by the case of Machzeh Grusha Sai, the mother is not becoming Pasal Tani Kainim. The, the mother is already a Grusha. A Grusha is anyways Pasal Ta Kain. So over here, in such a case, who says the child will become Pasal Ta Kain? For Aid, another question on this Chiddush of Rav Yosef. The Pasik says, He toy evoxiv. In the Pasik where it talks about Machzeh Grusha Sai, so it says, Toy Eva he. So from this we learn out that it's a Tayeva, it's abominable for her. For the, it's an Issa for the mother, what she did. But it says he, and we learn from this, Ve'em bonah Tayevin. But that Tayeva does not carry over to the child that there should be abominable, that the child should be a, a, a pogum, should be blemished, that she can't marry a Kayin. So that, that's a miut, it excludes that this child could marry a Kayin. Third question, Vo'oid, Tanya, we learned in the Braith as follows. A person gets married, remarried to a grusha, which is a lav. Or he marries a chalutza, also a lav. Or he marries a relative of a chalutza, which is also a lav, according to Rabbi Kiva. So Rabbi Kiva, so the kiddushin does not take effect even when it's only a lav. So therefore you don't need a get either. And the psula, the mother will become pasul, the pasul to a kayin, and vlada pasul. And the child will also be Pasal. So over here, Pasal means, according to Rabbi Kiva, that the child will be a Mamzer. And the Kaifin Oyselaitzi, we force him to send away his wife. Chachamim disagree with this, and they say, Yashle Bok If the Isser is only a love, so first of all, the Kedushin takes effect. And therefore, also, Tzriche Menu Get. If you have to give a get to divorce her, and Vihik Shaira, the mother will be kosher to marry a Kayin. And Uvlada Kosher. And the child will also be kosher. So what does this mean when it says that the child is kosher? So the Gemara now explains. Laman, when it says the child is kosher, to who does it mean that the child is kosher? Lav l'kohone. Don't you think it means that the child is kosher to, to marry even a kayin? So this is the third question on the Chiddush of Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef said that according to Shimon Ataymani that says that a child is not a mamzer, but he's still going to be puzzled to a kayin. But over here I see the Chachamim that hold the same opinion like Shimon Ataymani that the child is not a mamzer. And he also says that the child is kosher. And the Gemara understands now that that means that the child is kosher even for a kayin. So there's no blemish whatsoever. Okay, so the Gemara is going to answer all these three questions. No, they're going to try to answer these three questions. And the Gemara is first answers the Pshari and this Braisa. Says the Gemara, like, when it says here that the child is kosher, it doesn't mean that the child is kosher to marry Kainim. Lukahal. It means that this child is kosher, she, that the child is not a mamzer, and he could marry to any other Yid, but not to a Kain. We could still say, like Rav Yasef said before, that the child is blemished. Frek the Gemara. How could you say this? Ihachi, if so, it said right before this, he kshayra, that the mother is kosher. It said together, right? It said the mother is kosher and the child is kosher. Now, what does it mean when it says that the mother is kosher? Laman, to who is the mother kosher? Eloi melakal, wasn't coming to say that the mother is kosher to get married to anybody in Klal Yisrael. Pshita, that's obvious. Mishum dezanya, if so because she was mezanah, she had a relation with someone else, she becomes possible to marry any other yid. There's no such halacha that a woman that's mezanah becomes possible to any yid. By a kayin, there's a halacha of a zayna. By klal yisrael, there's no such a thing. So why would the brayis have to tell me that she's that she becomes a, that she's kosher to, to marry into the kol? El alav lekohone. Elamai, so what is it coming to say that she's kosher to, to get married to a kayin? Why? Because it was only a isalav, it's not a isakotis, and therefore she's not really a zaina, so therefore the khidish is that she's kosher for a kayin. So medihilakona, so if it's saying that she's kosher for a kayin, vladanami lakona. When it says that the child is kosher, so it goes together. Doesn't it also mean that the child is kosher for kohona? So therefore, this, this, uh, this is a question uh, on, on what Rav Yasef said, that the child will be blemished to get married to a kayin. But the Gemara doesn't uh, accept this. The Gemara says, no, not necessarily is it the same thing. Midi area, could you compare the two? Does it mean that the pshat that it says regarding the mother has to be the same for what it says regarding the child? Ha kidisa and the ha kidisa. What it says regarding the, the mother is one halacha, that the mother is kosher for a kayin. And when it says regarding the child, it's saying another thing, that the child is not a mamza and the child can marry into Klal Yisrael. But the child will still be possible to a kayin like Rav Yosef said before. Now the Gemara proves this point from the ratio of the Braise in Rabbi Kiva's opinion. It's logical to say that you don't compare the two. The Tani Reisha, in the Reisha by Rabbi Kiva, what does it say there? 
She's puzzle and Vlada puzzle and the child is puzzle. Now, what does this mean? He psula leman. When it says that the mother is puzzle, to who is the mother puzzle? Ile call. Is it coming to say that the mother is puzzle to marry any yid? That can't be. Like we just said, mishum dezanya evsula lekal. Because she was mezana, she becomes puzzle to marry any yid. There's no such halacha. El olav What does it mean? Rabbi Kiva was saying that the mother becomes pasul lekohonet because according to Rabbi Kiva, she becomes a zayna. She married a isalav. She makes her a zayna. And now, when it said vlada pasul, when Rabbi Kiva is saying that the child is pasul, to who did Rabbi Kiva mean the child is pasul? Laman to who? Ilay malukohone. Was Rabbi Kiva saying that the child is only pasul to kain? But hala kol kosher. Does Rabbi Kiva saying that the child will still be kosher to marry into klal Yisrael? But haava Rabbi Kiva avlad mamzer. Rabbi Kiva is saying that a child that's born from a marriage of a lav, the child is a mamzer and is possible to anyone in Klal Yisrael. So, Elop Shite Lekohal. So, when it says that the child is possible, it means that the child is possible to marry into Klal Yisrael. So, what do we see that in the Reisha, when it says he, it goes on Kohone, when it says Vlada, it goes on Klal Yisrael. When with the Reisha, so in the words in the Reisha, Rabbi Kiva, Hakadisa, Hakadisa, when it, what it says regarding the mother and what it says regarding the child is not the same. Seifanami, Hakadisa, Hakadisa. In the Seif as well, we could say when it says he kshera and vlada kosher, it's not the same thing. The child is only kosher to kohol, but not to a koyin. Like Rabbi Yosef said before, the child is still pogum lekohona. So this brayse we answered for Rabbi Yosef's opinion. What was the second question we asked? Vihi toyeva. We had before the Gemara said there should be a drasha that by the case of Machsa Grushasa, the Torah says that only the uh, mother is abominable, but we, we exclude, <coughs> but the child is not. So the Gemara says, no, there's a different drasha for that. He toyeva nami, we darshan differently. He toyeva, only this wife is a toyeva, ve ain tsarasa toyeva. But that abomination does not also affect the tsara, that the tsara should become puzzle as well. So it's not, but but avo baneha, but when you get a child that's born teyevin, maybe we could say that the child is a teyeva, that the child cannot marry a kain, like Rav Yosef said. Now the Gemara comes to the third question, and for this the Gemara doesn't have an answer. Elo almona kashia. We had the kavuchaimer from almona. That was the whole source for this halacha, and for that we still have the question. The Gemara repeats the question again. Mal almona shekain hiatzma mischaleles by a child born from an almona that got married to kohen gadol. There's a stronger reason that the child should be puzzle because the mother becomes puzzle. But over here, the mother is not becoming puzzle. So who says the child becomes a puzzle to kohone? So the, the whole source from this kavachaim is not a good source. Okay, so the Gemara says, Ela itmer hachi itmer. If we learned that Rav Yosef said this, he had to have said it in a different way. Amr Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef said, Amr Rav Shimon Berebi, in the name of Rav Shimon Berebi, Hakayel Maidim, everybody agrees, Bebo al Chayve Kirisis. So we're not talking here about a lav, but we're talking about a person that gets married to a Chayve Kirisis, Shavlat Pogum, that the child will be Pogum for marrying a Kayan. Now, what's this Hakayel Maidim? Until here, we had two opinions. Rabbi Akiva says, a person that marries Chayve Lavin, the child is a Mamzer. Shemana Temani, or the Chachamim say, a child only that marries Chayve Krisis, the child becomes a Mamzer. But now we hear the Gemara saying that even in such a case, the child will be kosher to marry into Klal Yisrael, but will only be puzzle to a Kayin. So that's a third opinion. Who is this opinion? Ma Nakayel Maidim, regarding who are we saying that he's made it that the child will be puzzle to a Kayin? Rabbi Shua. Rabbi Shua is a third opinion here. Ah, Chagavdam Rabbi Shua. Rabbi Shua says, Ein Mamzer Mechayve Krisis. Even a child born from an erva, which is a Kares, the child is not a Mamzer. He, but Nehi, the Mamzer lo Yahavah, because now Rabbi Shua's opinion is that only a child that's born from a marriage, which is a Chayv Misiv's Bezdin, only then the child is going to be a Mamzer, but not from Chayve Krisis. But still, Rabbi Shua agrees, Ni, the Mamzer lo Yahavah, the child is not a Mamzer, Pogom mi Yahavah. But the child still is pogum and is, is not can't marry a koyin. And the kavachayme malmana. And here we have the kavachayme from almana. Malmana le koyin gadol sheni suri shava bakoyl. When it comes to the lav of a of a koyin gadol marrying an almana, so this is not a lav that's equal for everybody, only for the koyin gadol. So bena pogum, so the child will be puzzle, will be a chalala, and can't marry a koyin. Zushi suri shava bakoyl. So over here, when you're talking about someone that married a chayve krisis. 
and it's a isra that's shava bakayil. Ain edin shebena pogum for sure. The child should become a pogum. Now v'chid teime. If you're going to ask over here the same question you asked before in the kavachaymer, mal almonish keniatzma mechalelas that by an almonish she herself becomes a chalala hachanami over here as well. Kivin shabayla asa zaina. Kivin shabala that is asa zaina. That over here once he's bayiler she does become a zaina. And therefore, the mother does become possible, just like by the case of an almana that married a kohen gadol. The mother becomes a zaina or a halala. That is over here. If you marry a chayv krisis, even according to Rabbi Shua, the mother becomes a zaina, and therefore that's the reason why the child becomes a halala. So therefore, this is a good kavachaymer. So this was what Rabbi Yisuf was speaking about, according to Rabbi Shua's opinion. Okay, now the Gemara starts a new Indian. I'm going to go into the next amud of the Gemara here. Uh, this is a new Indian being to a person that marries a Bas Yisrael, that marries a Goy. We had this once before in the Gemara, in the end of the first Patek, and there's a discussion over here in the Gemara, what the child that's born from a, a Jewish girl that marries a Goy, what's the Allah of the child? Is the child a kosher the child, or is the child a Mamzer? So the Gemara, everybody agrees. Be'eved, v'oyved k'chavim, a Baal Bas Yisrael. Eved Kanani, or a Goy, that marries a Bas Yisrael, Shavlad Mamzer, that the child will be a Mamzer. So the Gemara explains, When you say everybody agrees, what does it mean everybody agrees? Shimon HaTemani, it refers to even to Shimon HaTemani. Even though Shimon HaTemani said, There's no Mamzer from a of Lav. So over here, for a Bas Yisrael to marry uh, a Eved Kanani is only a of Lav. So over here, the child should not be a mamzer. But Hanimili Mechai Vilavim, the Tafsi Bu Kedushin. The whole logic of Shimon Atimani was because Bechai Vilavim, the Kedushin takes effect. And therefore, the child that's born is not a mamzer. When it comes to a Bas Yisrael that marries a Goy or an Evet Kanani, since the Kedushin does not take effect, Kechai Vekrisis Domi. So therefore, the child will be a mamza, just like a marriage with a chayv ekrisis with a kedushin that doesn't take effect. So here you see the logic of of this whole inyan of why, when a child becomes a mamza. If it's a kind of marriage where the kedushin does not take effect, that's when the child becomes a mamza, according to Shimon Atimani. Rashi over here brings the psukim where it says to Evet Kanani that the kedushin doesn't take effect because Evet Kanani is like a amadoyme lechamer. They're similar to a donkey, so kedushin doesn't take effect. And by a, by a guy as well, Rashi brings like that the kedushin does not take effect. But there's an interesting thing that Rabbi Kivayegi says over here that the emes is that for a bas Yisrael to marry a oivet kechavim, you're not even over an alav menatayra. When it says in the title like this bomb, all it means is that the kedushin doesn't take effect. But it's not an isalav. It's only an ismid rabbanon for a bas Yisrael to get married to oivet kechavim. There's a famous Rambam about this. The Rambam says, even though it's only a Isra Medir Abana, but nevertheless, this is an Isra that's worse than everything else, because it's guiding to go out of Klal Yisrael, but Minat Taira, really, it's no Isra. But the Kiddushin doesn't take effect. That, yeah. So the Kiddush of this Gemara here is, that even though it's not a Chayvi Krisis, and not only it's not a Chayvi Krisis, it's not even a Chayv Lav either. It's only Isra Medir Abbanon. But because the Kedushin doesn't take effect, the child that's born is going to be a Mamzer. That's the Chiddush of this Gemara, according to this opinion over here. This is uh, Amr Abba Baba Chon, Amr Abba Yechanan. So Meisvei, on this the Gemara asks, we learned in Abraise, Oyvi Kechavim Ve'eved Abba Bas Yisrael, this exact case of a guy, Eved Kanani, that marries a Bas Yisrael, Havlad Mamzer, so the child will be a Mamzer. But then the Abraise says, Rab Shimim ben Yehuda Aime, Ein Mamzer, the child is a mamza only if the marriage is a isa erve. And what kind of a erve? So I see over here, this opinion of Rab Shimon by Yehuda is the same like opinion like Shimon Atemani, that the child that's born only from isa kodes will be a mamza. And he's arguing clearly on this that we're saying here, that if the child is born from a relation with an Eved or a Eved Kanani or a guy, the child will be a mamza. So how could you say that according to Shimon Atimani, any time the Kedushin is not Teufis, automatically the child is a mamza. Here I clearly see that there's an opinion that holds like Shimon Atimani, and he holds that it doesn't matter. Even though the, though the Kedushin was not Teufis, the child is not a mamza. So therefore the Gemara says, is the Hakel Maidim cannot go on Shimon Atimani. Who's the one that was saying that is made to this? This is Rabbi. Even though Rabbi said, 
This is only said according to Rabbi Kiva. What's, what's, uh, what, what are we speaking about according to Rabbi Kiva? Shahaya Isa Chalutza Ke'erve. Rabbi Kiva says that a Chalutza, now the, the Isser, to marry a Chalutza is only a lav of Lo Yibane. There's no Isakadis, right? But Rabbi Kiva says a Chalutza is like a Erve, like the same like a Kadis, and the Kedushin is not Tefis Mokim, and the child will be a Mamzer. But Velele Svirele. Rabbi does not hold like Rabbi Kiva. Nevertheless, but Oyved Kechavim Ve'eved, if a Bas Yisrael marries a Goy or Eved Kanani, Maida. Rabbi is Maida to Rabbi Kiva that in such a case, by an Eved Kanani, where it's an Isalav, the child will be a Mamze. The Chiyasa Rav Dimi Yom Rav Yitzchak Bar Av Dumi Yom Mishum Rabbeinu, said in the name of Rabbeinu, which is Rabbi, Oyved Kechavim Ve'eved Abba Bas Yisrael, Havlad Mamze. The child will be a mamzer. So this is the Hakel Maidim that Rabbi Baba Chonam Rabbi Yechonah was saying, according to Rabbi, the child will be a mamzer. But now here the Gemara brings a few different opinions about this. Rab Ache Sarabire, Rab Tanchum Bere, Rab Chie Ishkfar Akoi. So these two Amiroim, or maybe these two, um, yeah, these two Amiroim here. So Paduk Haneshvu Yaisa. They redeemed these two uh, Yiddish women that were captured by Goyim. The Asum Arman Letveria. They brought them from Arman to Tveria. Rashi looks like it's not Gaitis Tveria, but Rashi is Gaitis Antuchia, which is a place in uh, maybe in Turkey somewhere. So one of these Jewish girls that he rede- they, they redeemed was pregnant from a guy. So now they didn't know what would be a dalacha with this child. So this is the case we're speaking about. A Bas Yisrael that had a relation with a guy. So So they came to ask Rabami this question. Omalu Rabami said to them, Rab Yechinen, Rab Belaza, Rab Chanine, the Omri, these three Amiraim said, A guy, a Kanani, comes and has a relation with a Bas Yisrael. Havlad Mamzer. The child that's born is a Mamzer. So Rab Ami was basically paskining that the child will be a Mamzer, like we said before. But Rav Yosef says, no, how do you know that this is the halacha? Omer Rav Yosef, so Rav Yosef says, Rabusa Lamechshav Gavri, is it a big thing that you could mention the names of all of these opinions that say so? Could be that they talk and say so, but how do you know that that's the halacha? Harav Shmuel Bebavel. We have Rav and Shmuel, both great Amiraim and Bavel. And Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, Uba Kapare, Beret Yisrael, another true great Amiraim, or even maybe Tanayim, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, Rabbi Yeshua ben Kapare, and Eretz Yisrael. Vamri law, others say it wasn't Bar Kapare, Chilufi Bar Kapare, Vaili Zikne Dorim. It wasn't they switched, instead of Bar Kapare, it was the elders of the Dorim and Eretz Yisrael, the Omri that they said, Oivet Kechavim Ve'eved Abba, Bas Yisrael, Havlat Kosher. The child that's born is Kosher. So over here we see that there's many other Amiraim that argued on this and said that the child is kosher. Elam Rav Yosef, so Rav Yosef says, the reason why you're paskining that the child will be a mamzer is because Rebbe he. Rebbe said that the child will be a mamzer. The Chiyasa Rav Dimi, Rav Yitzchak Bar Rav Dimi, Mishum Rav Beinu, Amrun, the name of Rebbe was said, Oyevit Kechavim Veved Abba Bas Yisrael Avlad, mamzer, that the child will be a mamzer. So therefore we're paskining like Rebbe that said that the child will be a mamzer. Adigamara brings, Rabbi, what did Rabbi Shua ben Levi hold about this? Rabbi Shua ben Levi, Yaimeh, Havlad Mekulkul. The child will be uh, not, not a good, not a uh, good child. Mekulkul. What exactly does Mekulkul mean? Laman, to, to who does it mean? He to, he's he's Osir to who? Ilay Melakal doesn't mean that Rabbi Shua ben Levi is saying that the child is Mamash Mamzer. Mekulkul means that this child can get married within Klal Yisrael. But Ahmed Rabbi Shua, Rabbi Shua ben Levi, we just quoted before, Rabbi Shua ben Levi were one of those that said that Avlat Kosher, that the child is Kosher. El the Gemara says, look Kohona. All Rabbi Shua ben Levi meant was that a, a Bas Yisrael that's born, a, a, a girl that's born from this marriage, from a Bas Yisrael that got married to Eved or, uh, or a guy, the child will be puzzled to Kohona. The Kulo Amiroi, the Machshiri, and the Gemara explains, because all these Amiroim that say that this child is still kosher, that the child, child is not a Mamzer, they all still agree that the child born will be pogim to get married to Kayin. And we bring back the same Kavachayim we had before. Mikavachayim Malmana. Malmana le Kayin Godol. Just like an Almana that had a relation with a Kayin Godol. So, Shaini Sura Shava Bakayol. It's not an Issa that's equal for all Yidin. Bena Pogum. The child born is a Chalolo and can't get married to Kayinim. Zushi Sura Shava Bakayol. Over here, the Issa of getting married to a guy is equal for all Yidin. Ain't Adinsha Bena Pogum. Definitely the child becomes a Pogum. 
Now you'll ask the question that we asked before, by an almana that marries a kohen gadol, the mother itself becomes a chalala. So maybe over here we shouldn't say that. No, but no, here it's the same thing. Over here the same halacha applies a mother, a bas Yisrael, that has a relation with a guy, she does become puzzle from kainim. Rashavir says that it means that she becomes puzzle to eat truma and for sure to marry a kain. So therefore over here the halacha does, does apply that the mother becomes puzzle. And the Gemara here brings a source for this. From where do we know? So a girl that had a relation with any Bas Yisrael, whether she's a Kehenes or a Leviya or Yisraelis, she's Paslua, that she's not Pasl Ta Kayin. Shenemar Uvas Kayin Kisiyah Almano Ugrusha. That a Bas Kayin that's an Almano Ugrusha, so then that Pasuk over there says that she can go back to her father's house to eat from Trume. Mi Sheyesh Loi Almanos Vegei. If she was married to somebody, she was married to a Yid, that she becomes an Almana or she becomes a Grusha because it was a real marriage, then she goes back to her father's house to eat Truma. But not over here, when she was married to a Goyen, there's no Allah, there's no marriage, bachal, there's no Almanas and Gerish, and she can't go back to her father's house to eat Truma, she's also possible to marry a Kayan. Okay, so therefore, this is the conclusion of the Gemara here at this point. The Gemara is bringing that there are, there's a big machlaikis here. We're going to continue tomorrow, but just the conclusion of here is a big machlaikis when a Jewish girl has a relation with a guy, whether she's kshayra or psula lakal. Of course, today we paskin, we'll see soon the Gemara, Rav held also that a, a Bas Yisrael that marries a guy, the child, the mother is a, 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 a yid, and the, chi- and the father is a guy, the child is a, is a yid, as kasha lakal. Thank you.